Hi, good morning to everyone. In this video, we are going to learn chapter number 12 that is understanding quadrilaterals. You all know about the quadrilateral, isn't it? Quadrilateral means it is a plane figure with four sides. Okay. So in this chapter, the first thing we are going to learn about the polygon. Polygon is a simple closed curve with minimum of three lines. Okay. So polygon means it is a simple closed plane figure with minimum of three or more line segments.
and i said this is a polygon it is a simple only because it doesn't cross a linear line segments can i say this is a closed figure no because this is starting point this is ending point here it doesn't closes so this is not a closed figure so it is not a polygon so for a polygon we must check whether it satisfies all the properties so can i say this is a polygon it is a simple because it doesn't cross any other line segments close of course starting and ending point are same plain figure yes it is a two dimensional figure three or more line segments how many lines here we used one two three four five six totally six lines we used so six is greater than three all the line segments are the straight lines only it is not a curved line so of course this is a polygon is it clear so polygon means it is a simple closed plane figure with minimum of three or more line segments circle is not a polygon square parallelogram trapezium or otherwise pentagon hexagon all these are the polygon now there are some types of polygons based on angle and based on sides now we are going to see the types of polygon based on angles so based on angles there are two types of polygon the first one is convex polygon and the next one is concave polygon so based on that angles we can able to differentiate the polygon into two types that is convex and concave for a convex polygon every interior angle is less than 180 degree here i draw one pentagon pentagon means five sided figure if we measure the angle for this pentagon totally there are five angles if we measure the angle of all these five angles means all these angles must be less than 180 degree so all the angles of the polygon is less than 180 degree means such type of polygon is called as convex polygon if each and every interior angle of any polygon is less than 180 degree means such type of polygons are called as convex polygon is it clear so here it may be 90 or 60 or 70 or anything else okay all the angles if you measure it means it must be less than 180 degree now for a concave polygon okay here if we use a protractor and measure the angles means totally how many angles are there totally six angles are there okay if we measure any all these angle means if any one of the angle is more than 180 degree means such polygons are called as concave polygon any one of the angle is more than 180 that is reflex angle more than 180 degree means such angles we call it as a reflex angle so any one of the angle is more than 180 degree means such polygons are called as concave polygon here this side this angle if you measure means it must be greater than 180 degree because for a straight line it is 180 you know that here this angle is more than the straight line so surely it must be greater than 180 degree is it clear so types of polygon there are two types based on angles first one is convex polygon next one is concave polygon convex polygon means all the angles must be less than 180 degree for a concave polygon any one of the angle is greater than 180 degree means such polygons are called as concave polygon is it clear okay now based on sides Again, the types of polygon based on size, based on 
Now based on sites there are lot of types are there and there are some specific names also for the polygon. If the figure is, this is figure, here there is a number of sites and then name, name of the polygon. You know that for, for a polygon, we need a minimum of three lines, isn't it? So three lines, three-sided polygon. The name for a three-sided polygon is triangle. Using three lines, we can able to draw only triangle. So this figure is a triangle, we know that. How many sides are there? How many line segments here we used? That is three. So it is a three-sided polygon. The name of the polygon is triangle and then for number of sides is 4 means we can able to draw one quadrilateral isn't it quadrilateral means square rectangle trapezium parallelogram rhombus right diamond all these comes under quadrilateral all these shapes are having only four sides the common name for a four sided polygon is quadrilateral quad means four so quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides. So three sided is triangle, four side it is quadrilateral. These two you already know in your previous classes. The next one is five sided figure. If the number of sides is five means, the name for that is pentagon. If the number of sides is five means, we can call it as a pentagon. The next one is Figure. If the number of sides is 6 means such figures are called as hexagon. Okay, so triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, hexagon. Suppose if it is a 7 sided figure means it is heptagon. Then 8 sided figure it is octagon. Then it is Nine sided figure that is the sides we are having number of sides is nine. Such figures are called as no nagan. And then for ten sided figure we call it as a decagon. And then for twelve side it is do decagon. Okay. So three sided polygon. The name for it is triangle, 4 it is quadrilateral, 5 it is pentagon, for 6 sided polygon it is hexagon, the number of sides is 7 means it is heptagon, if the number of sides is 8 means octagon, then nonagon, then decagon and dodecagon. Suppose if you are having the number of sides as 25, then what is the name for that? It is 25 actually if, if the number of side is n means the number the name we call it as n gone if the number of side is n means the name for the polygon is n gone up to 12 sides I gave the name as dodecagon okay now after that if you have the number of side is 25 means such polygon we call it as n 25 gone because n sides are there means the common name is n gone in the place of n if you are having 25 means the name is 25 gone is it clear suppose if i am having the number of sides is 13 if the number of sides is 13 means the name of that is 13 gone if it is a 39 means it is 39 gone. So up to 12 sides there is a specific name. So after 12 we call it as with that number and gone. N sides are there means it is N gone. So 25 means 25 gone. 13 means 13 gone. Like that it is. Okay. So the types of polygon it is based on angles. There are two types and based on sides there are some specific name for the polygon. Up to 12 we call it as a door decagon. Then for the other, if the number of sides is increased means we call it as a n gone. Okay, fine.
so now we are going to see how to find the diagonal of a polygon how to find the diagonal of a polygon what is the meaning for diagonal diagonal is a line which joins the opposite vertex suppose mm, if we take one quadrilateral let us assume it is a b c d is a quadrilateral now what are the diagonals this a c and b d are the diagonals okay the line which joins the opposite vertex are called as diagonals so for the quadrilateral a b c d we can able to draw only two diagonals that is ac and bd now for a quadrilateral it is easy to draw the diagonals suppose if you are having the polygon with having more number of sides means it is not possible to draw the lines and check it so instead of that it is given to find the diagonal of any polygon by using one formula that is to find the number of One by two into n into n minus three. To find the number of diagonals of any polygon is one by two into n into n minus three. Now we will check for this quadrilateral. Is it correct or not? So the number of diagonals of quadrilateral which is equal to actually in this formula I gave one alphabet that is n. What is this n? This n denotes the number of sides of the polygon. Okay. So here we are taking the quadrilateral. So what is the number of sides of a quadrilateral? It is four, is it? So in the place of n, we will substitute it as four because in quadrilateral we are having four sides. So one by two into four into four minus three. Okay. N denotes the number of sides of the polygon. Here we are taking quadrilateral. For a quadrilateral, there are four sides. So one by two into four into four minus three, which is equal to one by two into four into four minus three is one. Now we will cancel it. It is two. So one into two into one, which is two. So for a quadrilateral, we can able to draw only two diagonals. Yes, it is correct. Now we can able to draw only two diagonals. Okay. So now we are going to find the number of diagonals of any other polygon. Suppose if it is a door decagon, means what is a door decagon? Now the question is find the number of diagonals of dodecagon for this dodecagon what is the number of diagonals is the question you know that dodecagon means it is a 12 sided polygon it is not easy for you to draw the dodecagon and draw its diagonals okay instead of wasting the time in that we can easily derive it by using the formula so the formula is actually for a dodecagon What is the number of sides of a dodecagon? Number of sides of dodecagon is dodecagon means it is ten. Dodecagon means it is a twelve-sided polygon. So the number of sides is twelve. Now we need to find the number of diagonals. Number of diagonals of a dodecagon. The formula for to find the number of diagonals is one by two. n into n minus three. Here, this n denotes the number of sides of the polygon. So, one by two into. So, what is the n? N is number of sides. In your decagon, we are having twelve sides. So, one by two into twelve into twelve minus three, which is equal to one by two into twelve into twelve minus three. It is nine. So, six times. Now the remaining we are having one into six into nine. Six times 
lesson 54. So for door department, we can able to draw 54 diamonds. Is it possible to draw 54 diamonds? To draw the door again? it is not that much of easy to draw. It will take more time. So by using the formula, we can find it easily. So number of diamonds of door again. The next subheading is to find the interior angle of a polygon. What is that interior angle? Interior angle means the angle which present inside the polygon. Isn't it? Suppose I draw one pentagon. It is a five sided polygon. So it is a pentagon. Now, if I add all these angle space, what is the answer? That's a question, okay? Interior angle is the angle which present inside the polygon. If I extend the line like this, which means the outside of this we call it as an exterior angle. Is it clear? Yeah, I want it as A, this one is A. In this polygon, this A is the interior angle. This X is exterior angle.
So if we add all the interior angle of any door decor, that means always it must be equal to thousand eight hundred. Is it clear? So still we saw there are two formulas to find the number of diagonals one by two into n into n minus three. Then for interior angles n minus two into one eighty degree. Based on the same interior angle. Suppose they gave in the form of diagonals. How we are going to find the missing angles? See here, it is in your book. Exercise number twelve point one. The first is some B subdivision. Just one quadrilateral it is given. A, B, C, D. In this A, B, C, D, the two angles are marked as fifty degree and hundred degree. And then the remaining two angles are marked as x degree. Now the question is find x. This is in your book. It says number twelve point one. The first sum, D subdivision. Okay. The question is we need to find x. How to find what is the value of x in this quadrilateral? Actually, x is the interior angle of the polygon. Is it so? So sum of interior angle of any polygon which is equal to So, still we saw about how to find diagonal and how to find 
interior angle. Now the next one is we are going to find the exterior angle. Sum of exterior angle. Exterior means the angle which is present at the outside of a polygon. Already I said through the diagram. So sum of exterior angle of any convex polygon. Convex polygon means all the angles of a polygon must be less than 180 degree. So sum of exterior angle of any convex polygon is always equal to 360 degree. If we add all the exterior angles of any convex polygon means the answer is always must be equal to 360 degree. <coughs> Shall we verify it? Now it is in your book exercise number 12.1. Third sum D subdivision. Just they gave one diagram. For the diagram, you are going to find what is the value of the x.
drawing over the polygon. It is a simple closed plane figure with a minimum of three or more line segments. What is the meaning for regular polygon? Regular polygon denotes all the sides are of equal length and also all the angles are of equal measure. Is it clear? Polygon means you know that it is a n-sided. Then regular means all the sides are equal and also all the angles are equal. The example for a regular polygon, we can say equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle means it is triangle with all the three sides are of equal length. Suppose in this triangle the length of AB is 3 cm means it must be same for BC and AC also. So equilateral triangle means all the sides are of equal length and also all the angles are of equal measure. For a equilateral triangle we know that each angle is equal to 60 degree. Okay. So regular polygon means all the sides are equal and also all the angles are equal. Can you please say one more example for a regular polygon? For triangle you can say it is a equilateral triangle. For a we can say square. In square, we know that all the sides are of equal length. AB is equal to BC equal to CD equal to AB. All the four sides are equal. That is a square. And also, all the angles are equal to 90 degrees. Is it so? So, square is also a yeah? A regular polygon. Okay. So for triangle, equilateral triangle is a regular polygon. For a quadrilateral, square is a regular polygon. Likewise, if they give any other shape, suppose if it is a pentagon, they give. It is a regular pentagon. A regular pentagon means it is pentagon means it is a five-sided polygon. A regular pentagon means all the sides are of equal length. And also all the angles are of equal measure. Is it clear what is the meaning for regular? Now we are going to see one sum based on this regular. Now in that same exercise number 12.1, Now the question is we need to find what is the size of each exterior angle and then it is a regular polygon. it has total number of sides is 24 so the name for the polygon is 24 gone ok so how to find that now we need to find what is the one exterior angle for that polygon so sum of exterior angle of the polygon is We know that the sum of exterior angle of any polygon is 360 degree. Okay. So what is the sum of exterior angle? We need to add all the angles. So here it is given the polygon with 24 sides. So totally how many angles are there? How many angles are there? Totally 24 sides means it must have 24 angles. Is it clear? So 24 sides have polygon have 24 angles. Then what is that each exterior angle we need to find. So the sum of exterior angle of any polygon is equal to the number of sides into each exterior angle which is equal to 360 degree. Because if we need to, if we add all the exterior elements it must be equal to 360 degree. What is the total number of exterior angle for the polygon? That is 24 because the number of sides of your polygon is 24. It is given in the question. So number of sides is 24. Into each exterior angle, we don't know that only we need to find. So 
going to each exterior angle which is equal to 360 degree. Now we are going to find this each exterior angle. This multiply 24 will come to the next side as divide. So each exterior angle which is equal to 360 divided by 24. We will cancel this by using what do you do? 6. 6 fourths are 24. 6 6 are 36. 1 4 is 4. 1 4 is 4. Remaining 2. 4 5 are 24. So each exterior angle is equal to 15 degree. So for any regular polygon, if they are asked to find each exterior angle means just we need to multiply the number of sides of the polygon. Okay. So sum of exterior angle of any polygon is number of sides into that each exterior angle. So here the answer is each exterior angle of a 20 side polygon is which is equal to 15 degree. Okay. Now we will move to the next sum. In that same exercise number 12.1, put the sum B solution. The first concept is linear path. 
these these are the concepts whatever now i am explaining already you studied in your your seventh standard just i will recall it okay it is a linear path means for a straight line let us assume this abc is a straight line and then this bx is a plane okay which means it divides the <coughs> straight line that straight angle into two angles is it so so now what are the angles a b x and c b x these are the two angles if i add these two angles means it must be equal to 180 degrees let us assume this angle b a and b so for a linear path and a plus b which is equal to 180 degree okay for a straight line we know that the angle in a straight line is 180 degree if suppose any ray bisects that line means bisect not intersect in a line means it divides into two angles if you have those two angle means it must be equal to 180 degree because this is what straight line some of the angle in a straight line is 180 degree such concepts we call it as a linear path okay <coughs> this a and b are the adjacent angles the name we used as a adjacent angle it is just the nearby angle mm. now if i add all these three angles means it must be equal to 180 degree because it is one straight line angle in a straight line is 180 degree so if i add this all these Okay, this is 
A, B, and C, D are the parallel line. P, Q is a transversal line. Now, if a transversal intersects any two parallel line means how many angles it produces? Only how many angles we can able to see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Totally it produces eight angles. It is one of the most important topic. So if any two parallel lines are intersect by a transversal means totally it produces eight angles. Okay. So a parallel line cut by a transversal. Alternate angles. 
Mahalo. In alternate angle, there are two types, interior and exterior. Alternate interior angles are equal and also also, sorry, also alternate exterior angles are equal. How we are going to find the alternate means? Alternate means it look like in the shape of a Z. Here you can see this one. This one. It looks like in the shape of E Z. Is it so? So in that the corner angles. Okay. If I take only this one, that is A, this one, this one, this is B. In this we are having only two angles, that is four and six. So the angle which are present inside the E Z say no. That we call it as a alternate interior angle. So angle four equal to angle six. Just, just for a remembrance only I use the word it look like in the shape of Z. But don't always search where is the Z. Okay. Here you see the next alternate interior angle is 3 and 5. Just a multa like this. It also look like in the shape of Z. It is in the reverse process of Z. Okay. B, this is C. What are the two angles? 3 and 5. So the next alternate interior angle is 3 and 5, they are also equal. These two are the alternate interior angles. Okay, so if the two lines are parallel cut by a transversal means, its alternate interior angles are equal. Likewise, alternate exterior angles are also equal. What are the exterior angle means? The angle which is present at the outside of the Z. This one. This one, this 2 and 8. Okay, this 4 and 6 we said no. Just at the opposite of this 4 and 6, what is that? It is 2 and 8. No, these are the exterior angle. So angle 2 equal to angle 8. The next exterior angle is angle 1 equal to angle 7. Because we said 3 and 5. The opposite of 3 and 5 is 1 and 7. So angle 1 equal this is what alternate exterior angles. So if any two parallel line cut by a transversal means always its corresponding angles are equal and also alternate interior and exterior angles are equal. Then if we add them two interior angles on the same side of transversal is 180 degree. Is it yeah? Based on this I will give one sum just you will find out. Okay, in this just I will give you only one angle. Suppose here it is 60 degree. Okay, now I want only one angle 60 degree. Using this 60 we can able to find all the remaining 7 angles. Let us see. Okay, uh, I will assume it as 1 angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Okay, now angle 1 which is equal to angle 3 can I say because it is a vertically opposite angles because two lines process each other means already we said that here it is 60 means here also it is 60 the reason is vertically opposite angles we study no using that we can say okay or other means this angle 1 is 60 means what about the 6 6 is also 60 because it is a Corresponding angles. Okay. Then angle 1 and 6 are 60. Then what about this? Angle 4. How to find this angle 4? It is a linear path. See here, this is one straight line AB cut by one line P. E. Here it is 60 means. What will be this one? By using linear path concept. If we add the two angle means it must be equal to 180. Okay, so 180 minus 60 it is 120 degree. So here the angle 4 is 120 degree. Okay, okay. now the corresponding angle concept we can say angle 5 is also 120 degree. Then by using vertically opposite we can say this is 60, this is 120. Like this here also it is 60, here also it is 120. For this parallel line concept we can use the lot of properties to find the remaining angles either by vertically opposite or 
by linear pair or corresponding angles or alternate interior angle. We can use any of these following properties and find the remaining angles. This is the concept which you already studied in your 7th standard. Just for the remaining sums, if you know this concept, then only you can able to solve. So that only I can find this. Then one more based on the triangle also, I need to clarify. Now what is this angle they will ask? How to find? 
if the angles are equal means its opposite sides also equal the same property just the reverse okay so if sides are equal means its opposite angles are equal likewise if angles are equal means its opposite sides are equal so whatever i said still now that is based on parallel line and based on triangle these are we already studied in 7th standard just re recall you because if you know the 